gathered here today to celebrate the forthcoming Ram Navmi Mahotsav. We shall of course be having a grand celebration on Ram Navmi Day as well. But as is the tradition in the busy western world that the festival is often celebrated in the closest weekend to the festival. The literal translation of Ram Navmi in English is the birthday of Sri Ram. We are celebrating the birthday of the father of the universe. Which is very astonishing because everything has taken birth from him. The Vedas say, Yato va imani bhutani jayante yena jatani jivanti yat prayanti abhisam vishanti. Who is God? He from whom the whole creation has manifested. God is He in whom the whole of creation is situated. God is he into whom it all merges at the time of dissolution to manifest once again in the cycle of creation. Everything's father, spiritual father is Ram. There's a very beautiful episode <laughs> when Dashrath instructed Ram on the instigation of Kaikei to spend 14 years as an ascetic in the forest. At that time, Lakshman insisted that he would follow Ram into the forest. Ram tried his best to convince Lakshman but Lakshman was unrelenting. So Ram said, in that case, go and get permission from your mother, Sumitra. When Lakshman went to Sumitra, it was early morning time. 
Sumitra said, my child, why has all the music stopped? Because the Avadvasis were expecting it to be the day of coronation. They wanted to see the Lord of their heart and life on the throne of Ayodhya. And so the celebrations had begun before sunlight. Sumitra said, why has all the music stopped? Lakshman said, mother, everything has changed. What has changed? The kingdom has been given to Bharat and Ram has to go into the... So Lakshman expected that he would need to convince his mother about his decision to accompany Ram. On the other hand, Sumitra said, in that case, why have you come here? Lakshman said, to take your permission. Sumitra gave such a tremendously spiritual, transcendental answer. She said, Tata Tumhara Matu Vaidehi Pita Ram Sabhanti Sanehi. My child, Sita, the mother of the universe, is your mother. Actually, our spiritual mother is the mother of the universe. And Pita Ram, Ram is your father. If your father and mother are going into the forest, you have got no business to be here. Lakshman was astounded. He thought he would need to convince and cajole her. And Sumitra is explaining from an even higher level that you have got no business to be here when your father and mother are going into the forest. So literally, Ram is the father of all of us. And yet, today we celebrate his birthday. How is that? Because Ram does a divine leela. Ajo pisan nabhyayatma bhutana mishvaro pisan prakritim swamadhishthaya sambhavami atma mayaya. In the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna says, Bhagavan is Aj, one who does not have a birth, a janma. Then there is no question of celebrating his birthday and there should be no Ram Navmi as well. But then he says, Arjun, by his yoga maya, he descends in this world. He takes a birth. And that birth of his is divine. So further, the Gita says, Janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tattvataha. Arjun, Sri Krishna is saying, if you can understand the divine nature of my birth and my pastimes, you will not need to come back in this world of Maya again. You will be liberated from the cycle of life and death. Merely understanding Sri Ram's divinity will liberate us. That's true. Because the basis of Bhakti is divine sentiment. Slowly, psychologists are realizing that spirituality is not an imposition on the people. It is an intrinsic need of our soul. 
Our soul, being spiritual, is not satisfied by the mundane experience of our material life. Going to cognizant and working eight to five, making food for chunnu munnu and paputinku, etc. It's okay. But the soul longs for something more. To connect with a sacred entity beyond the material. So this urge to connect with something sacred is a spiritual need of every soul. Some people realize it. They come to the Radha Krishna temple morning Sunday program to satiate that need. So, in this path of bhakti, the very basis is divine sentiments towards that sacred. Sri Krishna says that, look Arjun, if you can develop divine sentiments towards the avatar, you will have the basis for bhakti. And then you will attach your mind to the Lord, which will purify your mind, that will attract divine grace and free you from the cycle of life and death. That is why it is to our advantage to understand the Rama Tattva. If we can develop this clarity of understanding, we will have the basis for bhakti, the divine feelings to Ram. How do we clarify our understanding of Ram? Do we ask our intellect? But the intellect has its limitations. It is made of maya. It is inherently insufficient in comprehending the Supreme Father. What to speak of the intellect of human beings? Even the great celestial devatas and the governors of the whole universe don't have the capacity to comprehend God. Jaga pe khana tuma de khana hare vidhi hari shambhu na chavana hare teu na janai maramu tumhara aur tumahi ko janani hara Tulsi Das Ji, he is speaking from the mouth of Valmiki. Valmiki is saying, oh Sri Ram, even these great personalities are unable to comprehend you. Who else will be able to do so? But without that understanding, how will the divine sentiments come? So we must then approach another source of knowledge. This source is the Vedas themselves. Nishvasitamasya Veda. The Vedas are not a human creation. When God manifested the world, he also manifested the Vedas as an act of compassion for the souls of this world, that through the Vedas they will be able to get divine knowledge. So, from these apaurusheya Vedas, not a human creation, such a book of wisdom, let us try and understand who is Ram. The Ram 
ताप नियोपनिषद से रमंते योगी नो नंते नित्या नंदे चिदात्मनी इति राम पदेना साउ परम ब्रह्म विधीयते राम इज ही इन हुम इवन द बिग परम हंसास हु हैव ट्रांसेंडेड द बॉडी एंड द माइंड who are situated in divine consciousness they too relish his bliss so somebody who is completely detached who has no attachment even to an atom of creation chooses to attach their mind to the feet of ram that entity whose rasa the detached paramahansa's relish is shri ram <clears throat> they also go into the etymology <laughs> rah shabdo vishva vachano mascha pishvara vachakah vishvanam ishvaro yo hi tena rama prakirtitah <clears throat> the word ram comes from two syllables ra and ma ra refers the meaning of ra is the universe or creation ma is the master of this creation so he who is the father of all creation is ram and today we are celebrating his birthday now our goal is not just a celebration the celebration is a way for cultivating our devotion to him our indian culture is such an amazing culture where the nurturing of devotion in the heart the spiritual inner growth is the focus of all activities in one way it is a very celebratory culture yesterday we had the ram leela enactment what a celebration and then it's followed by a celebration you sing and then dance and then feast every day is a some festival or the other say my god these hindus these indians they move from one celebration to the other there is no end to the celebration but our scriptures say that is how life is meant to be nitya utsav <coughs> every day is an opportunity to rejoice and for the holy personality sada diwali sant ki aatho prahar anand every day is a diwali and all eight prahars one prahar is 3 hours so 24 hours it is anand and anand so in this celebratory indian culture <laughs> the purpose of all the celebrations is not maj maro masti udao but through all of it to cultivate bhakti in your heart and that bhakti comes by repeatedly bringing divine sentiments divine sentiments to the personality of the supreme father shri ram divine sentiments towards his birth towards his past times towards his qualities his virtues towards his form this is the naam roop leela gun dham and sant the guru his associates <coughs> these become 
the basis of our bhakti. In this age of Kali, <coughs> Nam Roop Leela Gundham provides you with the paraphernalia for the most joyous and easiest spiritual journey to the supreme attainment. <coughs> Ehi kali kal na sadhan duja yoga yagya japa tapa vrata puja Ram hi sumeriya gai Ram hi santat suniya Ram gun gram hi In this age <coughs> you can try the other paths <coughs> you can try to do the Kundalini Jagran, the Tratak meditation, Nirvikalp Samadhi, etc. But you will meet with very limited success in the age of Kali. On the other hand, the path of Bhakti is simple. It is enhanced by the grace of the Lord. It is natural to the nature of our mind. But it needs faith. Those who don't have faith, go and do Kriya Yoga. Go and practice all the other things. But if you do, by grace of God and Guru, receive the faith. You then open yourself up to the most blissful and joyous journey to the supreme goal. And to nourish your devotion, Adhanam Rup Leela Gundham. When the Ram Leela was being enacted yesterday, they did a tremendous job, but it's not that we had, you know, <laughs> Arun Govil, etc. out here as Ram. It were members of our RKT community with their limited talents and skills. They were doing the best they could. But what I was observing was the response of the audience. The moment Sita puts the Jai Mala on Ram, spontaneously everybody clapped. The moment Ram, Ram lifted the Shiv Dhanush, immediately there was an outpouring of joy in everybody's hearts. That is the devotion, where it becomes so easy when they see that Leela being enacted, it just evokes memories in them of their bhakti and <coughs> helps them connect with the divine in such a wonderful manner. So, <coughs> Ram Navmi provides us with an opportunity to deepen our devotion and to nourish it by remembering this Nam Roop Leela. Tulsidas Ji in the Ramayan, he says, I offer my obeisance to the lotus feet of Sri Ram. Vande Ram Charanau Sabalayak. My Bhagavan Ram, his feet have a space for everyone. Whoever approaches his feet, he gives them shelter. That is the magnanimity of his personality. Kubja Surpanakha approached him. Surpanakha had all mixed feelings. The primary attraction in Surpanagha was calm, lust, 
Oh, he's such an attractive person. <laughs> because Ravan had said, look, Surpanka had a rowdy personality. Although she was a lady, but she was a lady Rakshasi. So she had a rowdy personality and Ravan said, you know, she's a pain in my neck as well. Why don't you get married? So she said, how? There is no matrimonial service in Treta Yug. Ravan said, do one thing, just go around the three worlds, whomever you like. I will get that person married to you. That person will have no option. So Surpankha went around the world and did not like anybody. Whether it was Mr. Universe or anything, all rejected. <laughs> and then she saw Ram and said, Tum sama purusha namo sama nari Yaha sanyog vidhi rachi vichari Manmana kachu tumahi nihari Taate ablag rahyo kumari Manmana kachu Chal jaoge In Hindi they say Thik hai I will make do with you You are not exceptionally outstanding Lekin kaam chal jayega so Surpankha got attracted to Ram, which means she did have some spiritual power. Otherwise, she would have gotten attracted to Mr. Universe. The fact that she is attracted to Ram means that she does have a level of devotion, but it was all mixed up. <coughs> Ram accepted her. In that particular avatar, he got her Nose and ears cut, but he said, look, whoever is attracted to me, I will accept. So the next time Ram came as Krishna, the same Surpanakha came as Kubja. And she said the same things. Oh, you're so attractive. Can I have you as my beloved? This time Krishna did not chop off her nose and ears. He said, absolutely. He placed his feet on Kubja's feet and placed two fingers under her chin and gave her a jerk. So that Kubja, you know, a hunched back lady. Now in the world, people will not look at her a second time. Because for the peoples of the world, the externals are of foremost importance. So who would like to accept a hunched back lady? And Kubja, nobody had ever looked at her a second time. And she is proposing to Krishna, the Yogeshwar of the universe. And Krishna doesn't care for the externals. He cares for the sweetness of the devotion in the heart. And that is why he accepted. So not only did he straighten her frame, he also made her exceptionally beautiful and accepted the Kubja as her, his beloved. So this is the Vande Ram Charanau Sab Laik he had a place for Surpanakha. And Parshuram, he was a very angry Baba. So Parshuram had so much of anger, he had destroyed the Kshatriyas, the warrior clans of the world 21 times. And he came to fight with Ram. Because Ram had just broken the Shiv Dhanush. Now this was a pair of bows. The Shiv Dhanush was there in the court of King Janak. And the pair Vishnu Dhanush used to be with Parshuram. So when Ram strung and broke the Shiv Dhanush, the sound was so tumultuous. It flashed through the universe. It was so startling that the horses 
pulling the chariot of Surya Narayan Bhagavan. They became shocked. They left the chariot and ran helter skelter. And Parshuram, after having done the work of his avatar Kal, was sitting in Samadhi. It broke his Samadhi. And he came there and argued with Ram why he had broken the bow. But Ram displayed such tremendous tolerance. He pacified the angry Parshuram, transformed his heart. And before Parshuram left, he started chanting, Ram, Ram. And he went around Bhagavan seven times and then left. Lakshman, who was a part of handling Parshuram Baba, was amazed at this transformation that he came with so much of anger and now he is taking the name of Ram and circumambulating, like you circumambulate the temple as a mark of respect and remembrance, he is circumambulating Ram and leaving. Ram got kept a place for Parshuram as well at his feet. And then there was Sugriv. Sugriv was a mixed up devotee. On one side he has Shraddha for Ram. On the other side, he has his worldly desires. He wants to be the king, he wants to relish the Aishwarya. And that is why when Ram killed Bali and gave the kingdom to Sugriv, he said, look Sugriv, you do this one seva. Sugriv said, what seva do you want me to do? Back end work of JK Yoga online classes? <laughs> Ram said, you know, those will start off in Kal Yug, you have to do Seva in Treta Yug. You just use your monkey army to find out where Sita is. Sugriv so said, oh, Mamuli Kame, do it. But the Sansar attacked him. And he got distracted. He forgot the commitment he had made to his Prabhu Ram. Even though Ram is the one who killed Bali and handed the kingdom to him. But this world is intoxicating. It distracts you from the purpose of your life. And not only that, if you get too much of sansar, it results in pride. Nahi ko asa janma jag mahi prabhuta pai jahi mad nahi. Brahma ji says there is nobody born in this world who gets a little bit of power and doesn't develop pride for it. Sugriv so became king. Now he has got all these other, his citizens saying, Raj Adhiraj Sugriv Maharaj ki jai. So he started thinking, I am something. This demon of pride, Ahamkara Sura rose. And the consequence was he completely forgot about his seva. So Ram said, I'll spend my Chaturmas in the forest. Four months, you know, the traveling ascetics in the old days. The rule was to keep traveling. But for these four months, they would stop the travel. This is the Chaturmas. So Ram said, I will spend my Chaturmas in the forest. And in the meantime, you find out about Sita. And at the end of it, he got no information. So he asked Lakshman, then go and ask him, what is he doing? Lakshman arrived and asked Sugriv. Sugriv had Tara on one side and some intoxicants on the other. 
and Lakshman said, you were supposed to find out about Sita. Sugriv said, Sita? What Sita are you talking about? Lakshman said, the wife of our Prabhu Ram. Sugriv said, Ram? What Ram are you talking about now? That made Lakshman angry. He can tolerate everything, but not an insult to Ram. And Sugriv is saying, which Ram? So Lakshman took out his Agni Baan. And he placed it on the bow and said, which Ram? Should I tell you which Ram? Now immediately Sugriv came crashing back to the reality. Are, nahi, 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 I remember which Ram. It has all come back to me in a hurry. So that Sugriv who's a mixed up devotee, Ram gave him shelter as well and made him a friend. And then there was Vishwamitra who approached Ram with doubt. Vishwamitra had heard people are saying ki Bhagavan has come in this world. But Bhagavan is formless. Bhagavan is all pervading. And how can a six foot personality be Bhagavan? Nevertheless, let me go and check him out. So many people, they start their spiritual journey. Let me check it out. You know, I have got this scientific mindset and I cannot take leaps of faith. If Einstein tells me E is equal to MC square, I will take leap of faith. But if the Gita tells me I am the soul, I will not take the leap of faith because I'm a man of science. But nevertheless, Vishwamitra said, I will go and check him out. So, uh, on his insistence, Dashrath conceded that, all right, Ram will accompany you into the forest. And now, Ram and Lakshman were accompanying Vishwamitra. Ram, being Antaryami, knows what is going on in the mind of Vishwamitra. Is he Bhagavan? No, but he is not. But there seems to be something special, but not really so. But you know, there is definitely something about him. Kuch sansha, kuch shraddha, kuch dushtata, kuch sanshay, kuch gyan. Ghar ka raha na ghat ka, jondho bhi ka swan. All kinds of dilemmas are easy to handle. But the dilemma of faith is the most difficult. Kuch shraddha, kuch dushtata. On one side, the heart wants to have faith. On the other side, the intellect is objecting. So Ram, he teased Vishwamitra. He started chasing the butterflies in the forest and plucking and admiring the flowers. My God, what a blossom here. Vishwamitra said, this cannot be Bhagavan. Bhagavan should be sitting in the temple and doing nothing and he is going after the butterflies etc. Lakshman is also seeing and wondering what is happening to my Prabhu Ram. But then the demoness Tadaka appeared. Vishwamitra said, there she is. Now Ram had been called to handle the demons in the forest. So he shot Tadaka and killed her in one arrow. But even that did not convince Vishwamitra. Then Tadaka fell at Ram's feet. And he saw the soul in Tadaka entering Sri Ram. And Ram giving her Sadgati, the highest destination. At that time, Vishwamitra said, Oh my God, he is Patita Pavan. He is the savior of the destitutes. So, seeing that quality, Vishwamitra became convinced. The doubting Vishwamitra was also accepted by Ram. And then, of course, we had Vibhishan who had tremendous quality in his bhakti. 
but he was falling short in the manifestation of that devotion. So when Hanuman came and met Vibhishan in Lanka, Vibhishan said, for so long I've been saying Ram, 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 Ram. Why is Ram not gracing me? Hanuman said, look, you are saying Ram, Ram, but you are not doing Ram Kaj, the work of Ram. When a Ravan, when you're standing in Ravan's court, why don't you object when he kidnapped Mother Sita? Why did you remain silent? So Vibhishan understood his shortcoming. And later on, when there was a tiff with Ravan, he rejected Lanka and came over. Ram accepted did Vibhishan with great joy. So what was Vibhishan's qualification to receive that Sharanagati? Vibhishan says that my Lord, I have got no qualification. Nath dasanan Karame bhrata nisi chara vansha janma suratrata. My Lord, that Ravan who kidnapped your wife, I am his brother. Think how sinful I am. And I have been born in a Rakshas school and a dynasty of demons, while you are the savior of the celestials. Sahaja Papa Priya Tamas Deha Jatha Ulu Kahi Tam Paraneha. Just like the owl is attracted to darkness, I have been attracted to sin all my life. And my, that's because my body and mind are tamasic, made from the mode of ignorance. So Ram said, Then why have you come here? Everywhere you need some kind of eligibility. When after completing the 12th, students apply, whether it's UT Dallas or wherever, the eligibility criteria is there on the basis of which selection is done. So what is your eligibility, Vibhishan? Vibhishan says, Maharaj, I have come only because of one reason. Shravana Suyasha Suniyahehu Prabhu Bhanjan Bhava Bheera Trahi Trahi Arat Haran Saran Sukhad Raghubir I heard your glories from Hanuman. He explained to me that you are Sharanagat Vatsal. You accept those souls who surrender at your feet. I have not come because I possess certain qualifications and degrees. I am admitting I am devoid of all such eligibilities. The only reason I have come is because you are Sharanagat Vatsal. You accept the fallen souls who become humble enough to realize they are fallen souls and who choose to take your shelter. That is why I have come, Maharaj. It is now your choice whether you wish to accept me or reject me. So <coughs> Ram accepted Vibhishan and he did his Raj Tilak. Now, the Lanka victory took place later on. Ravan was the king of Lanka. And Ram crowned Vibhishan in advance. Sugriv questioned that you have already made him Lankeshwar. Ram says, he is surrendered to me. I have to accept him. Sugriv says, Maharaj, the future is uncertain and any twist and turn can happen. You know when 
COVID kind of died away. People thought it is the end of all the agitation in the world now for some time. And who would have predicted that the Russia-Ukraine war would start? <coughs> and now another war and another war. So this unpredictability is there, Maharaj. So grief says, what if tomorrow Ravan also comes to your feet? You have very presumptuously made Vibhishan Lankeshwar. And if Ravan comes, what will you do? So Ram said, look, my rules are unchangeable. Anayainam harishreshtha dattamasya bhayam maya vibhishano va sugriva yadiva ravana swayam. I accepted vibhishan. I accepted sugriv. If Ravan comes, I will accept Ravan as well. My kingdom of Ayodhya does not have a regent. Bharat is ruling it on my behalf with my charan padukas on the asan. If Ravan comes, I will make him avadhesh. Because I have already made Vibhishan as Lankesh. And the remaining 11,000 years of my avatar kal I will spend in the forest. But let Ravan come. So at the feet of Ram, Vibhishan also gets the Sadgati, the highest destination. And then of course we have great devotees like Kevat who came with complete nishkam prem. Now the Kevat story of course is something to be relished slowly at some other time. But it's a story of how God becomes enslaved by love. In fact, this is the astonishing aspect of his personality. Bhakta Vatsal. Bhakta Vatsal, who loves his loving devotees. But Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj says, that the highest quality of God is not Bhakta Vatsal, it is Bhakta Vashya. He is enslaved by his devotees. That is why the Ramayan says, Vyapaka Brahma Niranjana Nirguna Vigata Vinoda so aja prema bhagati basa kaushalya ke god. Look at the astonishment. Brahma is infinitely big. And Brahma is all pervading in this world. He is niranjan and nirgun without attributes. Neti neti. But enslaved by the love of Kaushalya, the same Brahma is residing in her lap. This is Bhakta Vashya. And we see that quality manifesting in Ram's interaction with Kevat, where Kevat gets the opportunity to, worship, to wash Ram's feet. And then we have. Sita, Janak, approaching Ram. Janak was a jnani. He had no attachments in the world. He was Videha Raj. Certain two kings in particular have been named in Indian history who were the epitomies of Karma Yoga. They were doing their karmas, but the mind was in complete yoga. One was Raja Nimi in the Bhagavat, and the other is King Janak in the Ramayana. So Janak they, they are, and Nimi were given the title of Vide, 
Videh means they have no perception of their body. If Janak puts his hand in the fire and the second hand on his queen, he'll have no perception of either of them because he is beyond the body. Janak was a worshipper of the formless Brahman. And when he saw Ram, he got so extremely infatuated, he just could not take his eyes away. So he is experiencing that enchantment which the Chakor Pakshi experiences towards the moon. The Chakor Pakshi just keeps on looking at the moon. And, Ra and Janak is just looking and looking at Ram. In her he vilokata ati anuraga bar basabram sukhahi manatyaga. Tulsi Das ji, he plays on the word so amazingly that Janak is vitaragi, no rag, no attachment. But he has now got not only rag, further, deeper, anurag, ati anurag, a case of extreme attachment. A janak is totally confused. Has my sadhana all got messed up? I, with so much of effort, going through the yam, niyam, asan, pranayam, pratyar, dharan, dhyan, and reached samadhi, I mastered self-control to cultivate detachment, dispassion. And looking at Ram has spoiled my sadhana. I can't take my eyes away from him. What is going on? So Janak put two and two together. Brahma jo nigama neti kahi gava ubhaya rupa dhari ki soi ava. Is it that the same Supreme whom I was worshipping as the formless Brahman has manifested in the personal form today? Am I seeing my Ishtadev, the formless Brahman, in his personal form? Because that can then explain my attraction to him. Very perfectly concluded. The same Janak who was Vide, he now became even more Vide, his mind immersed in divine love. We could go on from devotee to devotee, but we'll conclude this topic with the devotion of Shabari. How many of you? Saw the Leela enactment yesterday. You lift your hands. So there was a question being asked by the master of ceremonies there. How many years did Shabri wait for Ram? Yes, those who participated, they all heard the answer. She waited for 40 years. For 40 years. Because her Guru Matang Rishi had grown old and Matang was about to leave his body. And Shabri said, Gurudev, you are leaving this world. What will happen to me? Matang said, Shabri, you will be even more fortunate than me. Why? The same Ram, your Ishtadev, will come and give you darshan right here. So Matang, by his divine foresight, saw that in the future and informed his disciple about it. And Shabri had faith in her Guru's words. She started waiting. So her devotion was a constant waiting. 
every day in the morning she would wake up and think will today be the day when ram will come she used to go and clean the path to her cottage hut she would decorate the hut with a variety of flowers she would gather fruits and berries to feed ram and then begin the wait the nectar of devotion is not in the meeting it's in the waiting that is a secret that very few people know tujhe milne ki jo hai lab dil mein lagi behad the devotee says o oh ram this longing i have in my heart to meet you mil kar ke na kahi uski buniyad mita dena if you meet me the longing will go away this relish this sweet nectar i am experiencing the yearning for you is the yog is the connection so i want to continue in that sentiment if you meet me it will go so shabari was in constant longing she would wait and wait and wait from morning till night and at night when ram did not come it would not disturb her devotion acha unko meri parwah nahi hai mujhe bhi unki parwah nahi are itne din ho gaye ram 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 aate hi nahi kya nishthur what a hard hearted personality he is if there had been a tinge of worldly love that is what would have happened the love would have been destroyed when two lovers decide to meet in the park and one arrives at the appointed 5 pm the other does not he says abhi tak nahi aayi chalo let me wait 5:30 she has still not come 6 o'clock 6:30 seven am now vajra thunderbolt has gone in the heart she does not care for me and i don't care for her she did a left turn i will do a right turn she does a right turn i'll do an about turn she does an about turn i'll do quick march chapter closed and that is why the worldly love goes up and down and up and down and shabari's love is divine love she says you have the freedom to come when you want बैठे हैं ता कयामत दर पे लगा के नारा है यह कृपालु नारा बस एक तू हमारा आई एम विलिंग टू वेट फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ इटर्निटी आई वॉन्ट यू टू कम बट यू डिसाइड वेन यू विश टू कम आई विल नॉट रन आउट ऑफ पेशेंस Shabri at night when Ram would not come, she would not lose her patience or grow negative. She would say, "Never mind, he will come tomorrow." That faith is the essence of bhakti. Without faith, there can be no bhakti, because bhakti means one day he will definitely accept me. that faith keeps the devotee going through the easy times and the difficult times and shabri would go to sleep with the firm faith he will come tomorrow the next morning the same process would begin and the wait would continue now this went on from day to day month to month year to year until it was decades four decades long and finally ram did come the rest is history what shabri did and how ram reciprocated so what we discussed 
was just one virtue of Ram. Vande Ram Charanau Sablayak Tulsidas Ji says, I offer my obeisance to Ram who accepts every soul who approaches him. The Gita says, Chatur Vidha Bhajante Maam Jana Sukriti Norchana Arto Jigyasur Artharthi Gyani Cha Bharatarshava Arjun, four kinds of souls come to my shelter, I accept them all. Like this one virtue, Ram has got infinite virtues. And virtues is just an aspect of his personality. What to talk about his divine form and his divine pastimes and his divine abode and his divine devotees. The highest of whom from the point of view of the disciple is the Guru. And then his name. The Ramayana says, Brahma Ram Te Naam Bad. This name is bigger than Ram. Bad Dayak, Bad Dani. Ram Charit Shatukoti Maha Liya Mahesh Jiya Jani. Out of the entire Ramayana, Umapati Mahadev has selected the name and chooses to make it the basis of his devotion. So the same Nam Roop Lila Gundham, this in the age of Kali is the sovereign recipe for attaining the ultimate salvation for those who have a tinge of faith. And for those who do not have any faith, is there still hope to do bhakti? There is. This is the power of satsang. Satsang is such that anybody who starts coming to satsang, they slowly develop the faith. That is why people say that, you know, COVID was very infective. In particular, some of the variants, Delta variant, etc., they were spreading so rapidly. But I say the most infective thing is faith. When you associate with people who have faith, your immunity breaks down. Your atheistic mentality gets softened. And the seed of faith gets planted. And then if you take a little bit of care in nurturing it, then the plant of bhakti starts growing. And if you protect it from unnecessary worldly associations, it becomes big and strong. And one day, on that plant grows the fruit of Ram Prem of Aviral Bhakti, Vishuddha Bhakti, Kunati Bhakti, Nishkam Bhakti. And when you taste that fruit of Bhagavat Prem, then your soul, which was yearning since endless lifetimes, gets satiated. So <laughs> let us celebrate this. Ram Navmi festival with that lofty objective in our mind, with enthusiasm, with the utmost faith we can muster up, celebrating the birthday of our eternal father. Siya Ram Chandra Ki! Ram Raghav, Ram Raghav, Ram Raghav, Pahi Maam. Ram Raghav, Ram Raghav, Ram Raghav, Pahi 
पथित आया शरण तब एक पथित आया शरण तब कर मम सिर हाथ नाथ एक पथित आया शरण तब कर मम सिर हाथ नाथ कर मम सिर हाथ नाथ एक पतित आया शरण तब कर मम सिर हाथ नाथ एक पतित आया शरण तब कर मम सिर हाथ नाथ कर मम सिर हाथ नाथ जय 
Sieram dei dei Sieram dei 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 Sieram dei dei Sieram Yes, 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 you are a man, 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 yes, you are Mapti Mahadev ki Vrindavan Bihari Lal ki Pavan Sutta Hanuman ki Jagan Guru Shri Kripaluji Maharaj ki Shri Radha Krishna Mandir ki